welcome to the Glow Zoomcast. I am here today with a friend of mine and a fellow mother, Dr. Christina Melendez from Beyond Limits Education Consulting. Christina, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. I'm, I'm, we've had these conversations many a times where I'm like, I just wanted to be you at one point. <laughs> just be a doula. And I know. I love that. So I'm going to tell everyone a little bit about what you do and how we came, how we came together um, around a conversation about birth. Um, so Christina works with individual families and schools, as well as entire education systems and nonprofits to increase access to high quality education and to improve education attainment levels, which is a super important factor. So she works with data-driven models to actually increase not only the access, but how children are learning and what they're learning. Um, which is not always the case for every single expert in the field. Um, I've always admired her so much based on how wonderful her children are. She has an older child who is in I mean, eighth grade. Is that right? Yes. Um, and she has a daughter who is my oldest child's age, my daughter's age. And that's how we met. Our second graders are in class together and we were on a field trip together. And I said something about you, you sort of asked me, like, I said something about, like, oh, yeah, I couldn't because I had some, like, work to do. And I do weird work and you do weird work. Like, our work is very, like, freelance sort of. And so we both are, like, on field trips a lot and kind of around. Um, and you were like, oh, like, what do you do? And so I said, you know, something about, like, birth, blah, 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 blah. And you were like, oh, and, you know, normally when I say this, like, all people here is, like, vagina. And so people, <laughs> men are just, like, shut down heel turn out <laughs> and a lot of women are just like oh that's nice cool and you were like what tell me everything like I'm obsessed with that I love breastfeeding I love birth you know etc yep it was a moment it was a great moment and the rest it was of meant to be. <laughs> yeah totally um so the reason that Christina is here with us today is because she's been working really hard on a book that has just launched, which is so incredible. I'm happy to say that I had a hand in editing literally just like typos because the content was so good. Um, she is somebody who I consult frequently just as a friend and as well as a professional on how, especially over this homeschooling period, like how do you navigate teaching your kids at home. Um, so she's just launched a book that is an ebook specifically helping parents build literacy skills. It's called Build Literacy Skills, 10 Fun Literacy Activities for Summer and Beyond. Christina, will you tell us about this book, where we can get it? And also please tell us about why, what, where this came from. I know that you've really, this, this pandemic really ignited your passion for empowering, empowering parents. Tell us about that. Um, well, first of all, thank you for that welcome. It was so humbling. Um, you don't even know. Um, I, I think that my commitment is really around thinking about education in a very holistic way. I think that a lot of parents have this thought of what education should be because it's just, it's prescribed like whatever the schools do that's or whatever we experienced growing up that's what we think education should be and what we know for sure as educators is that it's really not that it's really not the stuff that's happening in schools that makes a difference and all the stat the, the, the statistics shows that it really it really isn't um what we're doing in schools is definitely not um, supporting kids and their success, right? And so teachers are always scrambling for things to do, other things and other ways to get students to achieve. And parents are as well, right? And so the pandemic sort of was a reset um, and a setback for many different reasons, but it is a moment or an opportunity for everyone to sort of revisit what education looks like and what it could be. Um, and so this book in particular, I was just trying to squeeze it into this moment where everyone's questioning, like, well, what am I supposed to do? And I wanted to bring it back to the things that really, really, really matter and that really make an impact and a difference in children's literacy. Because it's not the rote memorization of letters or letter sounds. It's the um, natural sort of flow um, and fun that can be had while also acquiring literacy, right? And so um, the book is really focused on 10 
very clear activities that you can do on the run, at the supermarket, in your cars, um, at home, of course, while you're cooking. And they're really centered around what literacy is because many times we just think about literacy as reading. And literacy is actually reading, writing, speaking, and listening. It's got very, it's got four components to it, and they all are equally important. So you can't actually, and I've taught many kids in schools where like they can read perfectly, but they don't understand what they read because they haven't had enough conversations in their lives to have built these vocabularies or these experiences to be able to then understand or take ownership of what's being read, right? Um, then I've also beautiful writers in my classes as an educator for 15 years taught many kids. And the hardest part was always like, well, I can write, I just don't know what to write about, right? And so those things are important, but nothing is more important than speaking and listening because those are the components that come way before reading and writing. And if we don't develop those skills and parents are at the center of that work, because at schools, we actually don't have time to do that well enough. And so if parents took ownership of some of that work and stopped trying to push the writing and the reading, which teachers are very well equipped to do, and kids will definitely sit and do it in the concentrated time um, and focused way that schools will carry that out, I think we would be all in a better place and kids would be really, really happy to not only read, but enjoy what they're doing and we know that um at some point literacy reading kids learn to read from kindergarten to second grade but in the third grade they have to read to learn and that is a huge shift in the paradigm in in the way we teach and so it's really important that earlier on and even throughout elementary school that we engage students in all of those modalities and that that's where the book sort of um provides parents this just 10 activities, rotate through them as often as possible, whether they're older or younger, um, and, you, and you don't have to Google anymore, and you don't have to search for anything. It's all right there, and you will work on all of them. And so the book highlights which activities you're using, what modalities you're practicing. So it's, it's a really great resource for parents. I love it. If the activities are so simple and they're so fun, the explanation is so straightforward, the instructions are. Um, and really what I'm hearing is that it sounds like it's about ideas more than it is about a specific skill. It's like the skill comes out of learning about, thinking about, digesting, and retaining ideas. Is that, yes. is that right? I, I, I think Sarah... Teaching your child can be a very overwhelming task when you think about trying to fit that mold of schools. Um, and that is still the mold that exists and we're gonna keep existing within it. But what parents, what I'm hoping through this resource is that parents are also able to realize that, oh, you can gain ideas and understandings and language and build these skills without trying to be like the teacher in the school. Right, so while yes, the students or the children will benefit um, and they will build their literacy skills, I think, I think you're right in thinking that parents are also going to feel really empowered to, to open up this world for kids, um, for their kids as they're doing this, these activities. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us an example of an activity that we can do at home, one that's in the book or one that isn't, um, that's something simple and fun um, that we can integrate into our daily lives? Um, actually, so there's one in the book, and it's called Question Baggies, and they're just these questions that you can actually put together. I've already, like done them if you get once you get the book you can just cut them out and put them in little baggies and you can just have them all the time but the catch with the questions is that many times parents think that um reading is the only way or the only place where comprehension or literacy happens as i said before and the truth is that you can watch a movie you can listen to a song you or or an album right um and you can just ask questions the before questions you can ask 
um, a couple of those from that resource. You can ask a couple of the during questions, just take a pause from the song or the album um, or the movie and just ask some questions in the from the during section. And then you can ask some questions at the end. And seriously, you've worked the reading comprehension piece. They were happy and excited. You were engaged in conversations with them. They were able to present their ideas. You're able to have um, an understanding of what they got. You're able to provide your own insight um, as a consumer of whatever it was, whether it's the movie with them or the songs um, or podcasts, which I think are also really important um, ways to, to work on literacy. And that's it. You did it. It was a fun way and it doesn't have to just look one way. Like we're gonna sit and read now um, and let's do that. I think I want to share another one really quickly, which is just um, a writing one. Um, oftentimes we want kids to write from very young to very to much older. We always just want them to go write something or write and, and no one really knows what they should be writing about. And so one of the activities is the blank page activity in the book. And that, that literally just gives you a starting point where you just have um, a line. It just says, I was walking down the street and my, I ran into my best friend who suddenly couldn't speak. And every day for a week, every, everyone in your family or in your household should add a line or two, right? And if your child cannot write themselves, they can add and you, you can, they can dictate it to you and you can write it for them. And then at the end, what you get is this very, very, very silly <laughs> story. Um, sometimes they're very outrageous depending on how you started. Um, and they take so many twists and turns, but there you're really practicing um, the ability to, to think critically and to respond to someone's story because you have no control of where this is going, um, but you have to figure out a way to add or contribute to the story. And at the end, it's a product that everyone sort of owns, everyone participated in, and everyone really tends to enjoy that. Uh, and it also, on the back end, really motivates children to write because what ends up happening is that children are like, oh my God, writing is so much fun. I've been writing since forever with my family and it's been great, right? And it's like, actually no, but they're so willing to do the, the rote sort of writing, the assignments at school, when they know that writing is so much more than just the stuff that happens at school. Absolutely, telling a story is so hard. It still is such a challenge. Even when you have all the information in your head or the ideas in your head, actually telling a story so that someone else can read it, digest it, and, and then add to it or carry it on. Or, you know, we, our kids were learning about paraphrasing, which is really a kind of storytelling, right? It's so complicated for them. I think that was like one of the hardest things that we did with our first graders all year was paraphrasing because it was only and totally about ideas. So um, this sounds like such a great way to help a child put that together and have so much fun. I mean, it's like very tricky, right? It's very tricky. They don't know. They don't know what's going on. We know. They don't, they don't know. They don't know we'll get what we're doing. <laughs> um, something that a lot of friends of mine and our clients have been talking about is how, you touched on this before, but like just how daunting this time is. All over the country, people are having to figure out what this new schooling formation looks like, right? What is this format that we're walking into? Is it purely going to be homeschool for some people? Yes. Um, I'm in California right now. It is when we're back in New York with you guys. We're apparently going back full time because we already have small class sizes at our school. Um, and then there are places that are, where it's going to be hybrid. And the most challenging thing for me working um, through the virtual learning process was with somebody so young, you know, with first grade, with a first grader, and as somebody who's not an educator, um, was figuring out how I was supposed to take the concepts learned in class and then continue to teach them, especially because for a lot of us, the concepts in class are really are new ways of learning and teaching. So they teach math really differently than they did when we were growing up, for instance. Um, do you have any advice for those of us who are just like really daunted by what our job is in this new world? Um, you may not believe it when I say it, but don't. <laughs> Stop. 
just stop trying to do whatever the school is doing because the school's already doing it. Um, and trying to put your hands in the mix can actually do more harm than good. Um, particularly when your children are younger and are sort of, especially in this moment where they haven't been in school for a while, they sort of lost touch with routines um, and structures and strategies. They've been practicing them and then summer came and so they're off again. So the best thing that we can do in general is just to make sure that their foundation is very strong, right? And the second thing is their confidence. So both of those things go hand in hand, right? So a strong foundation with those kinds of activities and building all the modalities in their literacy, making them, exposing them to a bunch of things that, they, that you read, um, having conversations with them about everything. I mean, everything, like how, why do you think, and sometimes it could be very silly, like why do you think the butterfly is flying? And they're like, because it has wings, like that's all it, like what? And sometimes they're dumbfounded because they assume that you know enough, right? To know why they fly. But what it helps do is sort of helps them express what that means. It helps them build sequence in their mind about how they even got to getting their butterflies. I mean, you can have a conversation um, for an hour about why a butterfly flies even though all the facts are there. And those are the most important conversations to push because they actually have agency, right? They have the vocabulary, they know how it works. They, you've had conversations, particularly in our school about the butterfly and the cycle. So pick things that your children are really, really good at, know a lot about. It could be anything from playing with their sibling to cleaning up their room to, things that they've experienced, vacations that they've gone on, whatever the case may be, whatever they're really, really interested in, pick those things and ask very basic questions. Um, play those games where you're like, I'm so confused. I'm not sure how that happened. And then have them just explain it over and over again and, and solidify that foundation of being able to speak and listen and read and write in the ways that they know how. Um, because that then builds their confidence. And th that's the perfect equation for a child to return to any environment and own the space and be able to perform. Um, so that's, that's really what it is. What ends up happening if we try to do the work, and I say this because, as you said, I wasn't taught math the way our children are being taught math. In fact, I think my oldest who actually went to the same school was taught math slightly different from the way Isla is being taught math. So it's just, it's also very tricky. And for me to get in on that um, could build some insecurities around how she feels. And that insecurity will lead to a, a not so confident math student, let's say, and then it all blows up in our faces. So I think it's really important to work on the things that we know are important in things like math, like knowing that two plus two is four, being able to look at four things and quickly be able to say, oh, four, and um, rolling dice and just jumping that many times. I mean, it literally is that simple to build the foundation and make it very solid because it does work in school. So my, my ultimate thing is just stay away. Just stay. You can do more harm when you try to get involved. And, 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 it can, and there's a uh, chance that we can't they can't come back from it. And I know that sounds very detrimental, but if they feel like they cannot, and then that's, conf if they feel like they can't with their parents, who they love and love them, and then they go to school and they also feel like they can't with people who care for them, then they're sort of very clear and have a lot of confirmation that like, you know what, maybe I'm not good at this. And you don't want to be there. Right. It sounds like they would be telling themselves a story and everyone else would be telling the same story and confirming their story. Yeah. Um, it's, it's counterintuitive initially because so many of us are raised to 
push ourselves. You know, there's this idea of like, and you and I've talked a little bit about this in the past, like this idea of like the growth mindset and, um, someone I really respect and admire, AKA my therapist, uh, says like, you know, like forget the growth mindset, like enough already with the growth mindset. It is, it is enough to be really, really good at what you do and to keep getting better at what you do in your own, in your own zone and in your own space and to let that be good enough if it's satisfying and fulfilling, which as an adult is like totally goes against what we want for ourselves and what we want for our kids, right? Which is not to say that a child isn't going to grow. The point is that you don't need to be constantly pushing. We come in such like a pushing, from such a pushing society. Um, as opposed to flowing. And, and the reality is that um, when we're in a position like we are right now in the pandemic, where there's like really not, there's not a lot of room to like go somewhere, you know, physically, mentally, et cetera, that really solidifying, shoring up the foundation is, is so important. And it reminds me of advice that I got when, um, when my first was really little, when Anya, when Anya was little, which is um, to read the same books over and over again because it's really good for the child to start to be able to predict what comes next. Um, and so for those of us who are trying to really like return to the basics in, in the concepts of how we're teaching like our foundational philosophies, you know, just staying where we are and improving a little by little on that sounds like it's going to be the best for everybody and give us more confidence too. Um, I find that all actually really reassuring um, and makes it feel possible. Yeah. Which, yeah. And, and which, which is hard to imagine some days when we wake up. I, I think it's like when you, when you said this idea of flowing, I thought about pushing, right? This, that we're, we're always pushing and going and, and not being. Um, and I think that another thing that's really important, if nothing else, is to be present right? To be, and I know that that's easier said than done. And I know that because it's hard for me to do it. But if you can take time to just actually listen to your child, it's, it's the most powerful thing you can ever do for them. Um, that they feel heard, that they feel understood, that they feel cared for and valued, that they know that their opinion matters. It's just central to all learning, which is also a big thing in my work where, yes, I can, I can teach you how to teach your child how to read. I can, I can do that. But it's not going to go anywhere if they don't feel like you believe they can. And so whatever it is that parents can do with and for their children to make them feel like they can and that they believe in them wholeheartedly, um, I think that that's like the number one thing that you can do because it also gives you, you will learn so many things about your child and just how much they know already um, because you'll pause and you'll see and you'll be awed by just their amazing ways to the world. Um, but you will feel completely capable of advocating for them in the future if that's something you need because you will have the tools and the words and examples, right? Oftentimes parents come into spaces and they're like, no, I just want my child to be able to stay on top of things because, you know, I don't want the teacher to say that they can't or they aren't performing to standard, to grade level, whatever the case is. And as a teacher, I've had those conversations many times with parents where I'm like, well, I don't really know and I don't know why he doesn't get it. And it was one parent who was able to tell me, well, if you just start by asking her, how she feels, then she's more likely to answer the other questions about school. And I was like, okay. And sure enough, right? Those things matter and it make a whole lot of difference. Um, and they can change the teacher or the school's opinion about the child. And they can, you can actually help the teacher um, help your child. And so, but you won't know what to say because you don't know your child, you're too busy sort of running around the chicken without a head concept, um, trying to teach math uh, without algorithms and trying to teach multiplication without using the X in the middle, right? Like, I mean, 
that can put us in a spinning thing forever versus let's just watch. You know, you notice that she holds the pencil this way. You notice that she looks up when she's thinking. You notice that um, she stares when she's counting in her head. When she counts up, it's this way. When she counts down, she thinks differently. All of those things are very, very powerful tools to communicate to teachers. It's been such a cool experience to actually sit next to my daughter and watch her learn. It has blown my mind. And it was by far and away the greatest gift that I got out of the intensity um, and the pain, because there was a lot of you know intensity and pain around having to transition um, in an already stressful environment to virtual learning, but man, what a gift. I know so much more about what she's capable of. I also know so much more about where her challenges are. You know, like now I'm like, oh, I see. Okay, got it. This is where we're gonna need a little bit more of this. And if I come at you like this versus this, then we have a different reaction and everything. It's been, it was really, really powerful. And I think for a lot of parents who, and let's be honest, there are a lot of parents who weren't able to sit and focus and be next to their kids, right? Like this is also a place to even be able to take the minute to be present. Um, and there were parents who were sacrificing a lot in order to be able to do that. Um, if they were able to, to make some changes. And so um, being able to be present and focused during that time, I think is probably something that's going to serve a lot of kids and parents as they move forward in their educational experiences um, in the years to come. Christina, thank you so much. This has been such rich information. Um, can you tell us where we can download the Build Literacy Skills 10 Fun Literacy Activities for Summer and Beyond? So you can go to my website, www.beyondlimits.family. Dot family. Yes. So www.beyondlimits.family. And your Instagram is at beyondlimits underscore family. And we will be seeing you there. Christina, thank you so much for being my friend, Dr. Melendez. <laughs> Thanks for having me. This is fun. Awesome. I'm so glad. Bye, babe. <laughs> Bye.